Welcome back everyone to complete TSA placement series with C++. After a long break, we are back with a topic of arrays. In this particular session, we will create our own class of arrays. Yes, I know that there are several different classes for arrays and we have several utilities in those classes. But it will be fun to create our own class and create our own methods or in that particular class. So first of all, we will learn about basics of object oriented programming. So if you don't know about object oriented programming, then you can see that section. Otherwise, you can skip the particular section. So yes, let's begin with our lecture right away. Before starting with array class, let us first see some basics of object oriented programming. So if you know the basics of object oriented programming, then you can skip this section. Over here, we'll talk about what are objects and what are classes. What is an object and what is a class? So a class is, uh, is something like a user defined variable. We have several variables in C++ uh, like integer, string then we have array we have character we have boolean so if we want to create our own data type then we can create it by using a class so uh, let us let us uh, take a very good example over here let us say we have our whatsapp messenger okay so we have several users in whatsapp messenger so what does a user have in that whatsapp messenger a user has its contact a user will have its status which will be deleted after 24 hours then user will also also have his or her, her profile picture okay and several other things so can this be can this user be a separate data type exactly we can have a separate data type named user which will have these properties okay so a vector okay a vector is a kind of user defined class over here you have seen about vector in uh, previous sections we used to create a vector we used to declare a vector and then we can add or uh, add elements into that vector by calling just by calling add function so yes a vector is a class let us come back to user for now so a user can have these properties okay now let us say we have uh, we have last seen right when we click on a users okay a users contact we have last seen written at top if there are no privacy settings then how do we calculate that for that we need to call a function that will be specific to that particular user so it can have several functions so over here if this user can can have record last seen something like that record last seen okay and whenever let us suppose that we have a user and we have created okay this is our user this is our class now when we create a class we don't store it in memory okay we don't reserve memory for the class but when we create an object of a class let us say we have created two object of class okay let us say ram has come to the whatsapp recently so we will create a user named ram and we will also create a user let us say some new user has come to whatsapp so let us say shyam shyam will also be a new user so at that point of time when we are creating an object we are creating instance of that class okay we this is a variable this particular thing is uh, a data type and 
and these both of these are variables so data types don't don't store memory but when we create those variables okay variables of those data types they store some amount of memory they actually store garbage values in the memory okay so yes we have two users ram and shyam so whenever ram all opens the chat of shyam okay what functions should trigger when uh, should trigger to show last scene okay we we can we can trigger a function that is show last scene and we can just pass the object ram or we can just write ram dot show last scene so what will happen is the show last scene function of this particular ram object okay all these functions are count confined to the object so so show last scene function of this ram object will be called okay so yes we have uh, several data types okay we have several primitive data types in our class we also have several functions okay they we have exactly same as functions normal functions in c++ but over here they are known as methods so whenever we create a function in a class and when we create an object of that particular class then the function in that class will be called as method okay so over here we will call show last scene method of object ram so yes this is this was a brief about objects uh, and classes let us move to visual studio code to learn about them more so over here we have our int main uh, okay int main function and over here itself will create a class so this is the syntax of class we need to declare class then we need to declare name of that class let us say user and over here we will declare all the data types in this particular user so over here we, what we are doing is we are creating a template of a user what all properties and what all methods a user should have let us say we have string name not int name but string full name of the user and we can have contact so contact will be stored in long long because it is a 10 digit contact so long long contact okay so we have two variables in our user let us have only two variables for now and then over here what we can do is we can create a user user named ram okay ram dot first of all we will assign full name ram dot full name will be equal to that string okay so the property full name of the ram will be changed okay of the ram object will be changed over here so let us say ram and let us let us have a surname okay and then let us have his contact okay let us have his contact this is his contact so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten ten digits over here yes so this is full name and contact will this work i'm just asking you a question will this work let us see if this will work or not let me just zoom out and let me just hit the play button you see uh, over here whoops sorry i'll just wait the button over here okay so over here you see ram user full name is private within this context we have got an error okay and it says it is private so what is uh, all about private and public you must also have seen we have a public okay we have a keyword known as public when we are solving some lead code question so what is private and what is public let us move to our board to know more about public and private so over here if anything is private in a class that can only be accessed by methods methods and classes 
inside that particular class okay inside that class but when anything is public it can be accessed from anywhere okay so private and public keywords are actually uh, specifying the access and as they are specifying the access both of them are known as access modifiers they are known as access modifiers so how can we change the access of of all the variables we can just enter okay we can just write public and under the public keyword we can declare some variables okay int string we can also declare some methods okay as in we can write some functions let us say void fn and we can write some functions and under the private method and under the private method we can also store some variables so this particular variable will be private okay it will be private and it will not be shown to any other uh, any other functions outside this okay uh, i will give a good example of private variable suppose we have a bank okay bank also stores the data of its customer into a customer object and suppose we have a variable known as bank balance so do we need to show or do every each and every function need to get access of that bank balance no only the functions inside that particular objects should get the access so at that point of time we will need a private variable okay so that we cannot okay a function outside the class cannot access the data which need high security okay so we store all the high security things over here and we also store some functions that can be accessed only inside that particular class we don't want them to be accessed outside the class okay so yes this was about public and private but over here we did not declare anything as we did not declare anything by default the access of all the variables was private so let us declare public over there let us move to our visual studio code and write word okay by right keyword public over here public oops sorry yes public now let me run the code okay let me run the code over here you see everything has worked well now let us let us uh, write let us write over here c out okay ram dot full name and then i will just give a hyphen and print ram dot contact and save the code now let me run the code when i run the code this is what i get okay so what do we have over here is ram gupta and we have his contact number let me move my video okay to the bottom okay so we have this particular contact over here so yes this is this was about creating a class now let us let us create a method in this particular class let me just write i will write void and i will write print details print details and over here i will have the user is ram the user user is user is and then i will write full name full name whose whose contact number is let me have alt z okay 
whose contact is contact whose contact is this so yes I have saved my function now let me also create create one more variable okay let let us create one more variable uh, over here not variable actually we we will create an object okay so over here we will create we will create another object user sham and we will write sham dot full name sham dot full name equals to sham sham let us say sharma and then we will write sham sham dot contact equal to equal to and this is the contact number of sham okay let me just erase this out and over here i will just write end l okay now let us print the details of ram and sham what do you think will be printed so over here when i print details of ram and when i print details of sham just guess the output okay pause the video and guess the output let me just run the code i hope you have paused the video here is the output so over here you see that first of all we got user is this and his contact number is this and then we got this the user is this whose contact number is this okay 7878 so over here the the only motive of creating the object was to make you realize that both the things, the data of Ram as well as the data of Shyam is independent of each other. Okay, both the objects are independent of each other. So suppose you have an WhatsApp account and your friend also has a WhatsApp account. So the accounts of both of you are independent of each other. What you put in your status does not reflect okay does not have any effect on the account any direct effect on the account of your friend and this is the beauty of object oriented programming so yes this was about basics of object oriented programming let us now focus on creating our own array class okay so over here let us create our array class so first of all in our array class we will have size of that array okay for now for simplicity let it be 10 okay now what should be done in an array so we can insert into our array we can insert into our array we can delete into our array okay and we can get size of that array for this particular lecture we will implement both of these will implement size will implement some insert functions okay so first of all we'll have size as 10 then we will have our array okay we will have our array in arr 10 okay this will be our declaration of array now this particular variable will be private to us okay nobody can access the internal array they can only insert they can only access the array through insertion and deletion so what we will have is we will have a method known as insert okay insert at last so what it will do it will insert the element at last suppose this is our array and it is filled till here and there is a new element so the new element will be inserted over here at last now we will also have insert at index insert at 
index and this is going to be challenging for us how can we insert an element at index let us see let us have an array internally internally it is using inbuilt array of c++ right so over here let us say that this is our array okay we have numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 and now let us say let let me just uh, increase the size of this array okay okay so this is our array and now let us say let us say that the we need to insert at this particular index okay we need to insert at index number three and now elements still here are filled elements still here are filled so yes we will also have a count variable okay we'll have a count variable whose default value will be zero and as we insert the elements its value will keep on increasing okay whenever we need to insert at last what we will do we will just write in our function array count equal to the element or the number we want to insert so yes this will be our basic approach now coming back to the array okay to inserting at a particular index let us say we need to we want to insert 7 over here how can we insert so to insert 7 over here first of all I need to shift my 6 okay shift my 6 from here to here then I need to shift my 5 from this position to this particular position then I need to shift 4 from here to here and then finally I can insert my element 7 over here okay so when we are inserting in between we need to shift all the elements one position forward okay I need to shift all the elements one position forward so how are we going to do it okay can we start shifting all the elements from here okay let us say let us say now that we want to insert at this particular place I will just erase off all the unnecessary things okay so we are going to insert over here so can we just shift 7 over here then 4 over here but when we shift 7 over here the 4 4's value will be overwritten by 7 so we cannot start from from this particular index instead we need to start from last first of all 6 will be shifted over here okay then we'll shift 5 over here then we'll shift 4 over here then we'll shift 7 over here then we'll shift 3 over here and at last we will empty this position and insert our new element to this position okay so in our function we need to take two things suppose we have index okay this here is where our index will be and here is where our count will be okay so we need to start from this particular index that is count minus one and we need to go on we need to go on until it is equal to index okay when it is lesser than index we need to stop we don't need to shift this to over here because at this particular index at this particular index we will have our new element so yes this is an overview of inserting at a particular index function now let us uh, let us write it in our code so let me move to my visual studio code and over here i will just erase all the things so i will just erase all the things related to object user okay let us now create a class class named my array my array and i will just put a semicolon over here instead i'll forget at the end so first of all we will create a private variable okay we will create a private variable int arr int arr 10 we will also have int size as private okay we don't want it to be uh, public 
okay we don't want it to be public so that uh, any function can access it and modify it we don't want that and we also don't want to modify we don't want other functions from the class okay outside of this class to modify this count now let us declare our public methods okay first of all it will be void get size okay get size will get the current size not the capacity capacity of the array capacity of the array is 10 okay so let me just write over here capacity instead of size but what will be the current size of the array it will be equal to this count so over here we will return count okay so void get size count now let us let us have this function print array okay print array void print array now uh, how will the array print okay how, what we will take and follow will we take capacity or we will take count we will obviously take count okay so for int i equal to 0 i less than count i plus plus we will print element arr i and at last we will end the line okay so this way we can print our array but before printing the array let us also insert the elements so let us declare a function of inserting an element at last okay first of all we'll declare the function and over here this method will accept a number okay so this method is accepting a number and we need to insert at last so before inserting at last we will check if this array is already full or not okay how we will know that count is the variable okay count is the index where the element is to be added so count should always be less than size okay count if count is less than size then only we can insert the element over there so array array count will be equal to num and then we will increase the value of count we will move our count pointer forward now if if the counts number or counts value is equal to the size at that point of time the array is full and now we cannot exceed okay and thus we will write c out array array is full and cannot add number and over here i will write n u m num let me just end line also end l okay so yes over here array is full and we cannot add number further so this was about my array let us let us uh, declare an array over here my array okay my array my array my array now my array dot okay my array dot get size so over here we'll get our size okay and we will print as it returns okay actually it returns us the count so it will be int int return uh, get size so it, it it returns an integer so what we will do is we will print it on our console and end the line over here okay so first of all we are getting the size and now we will just insert start inserting the elements so my array dot insert at last i am just randomly adding some elements my array dot insert at last let me add two more elements insert at last okay 12 and my array dot insert at last and let me just have 45 okay and now let me just print the array so my array dot print array let us save the code and let me run the code 
okay so we have an error over here it says count is less than size size is not defined we don't have any any word known as size over here so let me just change it to capacity capacity and now let me run the code you see first of all we have printed the size of the array size of the array over here is zero okay now let me let me just copy this code and paste it over here okay let me paste it over here and let me write now now the size is now the size is and then we will get the size and then at last we'll end the line okay so now let me just print the code and you see that now the size is 5 first the size was 0 and all the elements are printed in sequence now let me let me just uh, copy this code for six times okay so let me just have one two three four five six over here over here the element should not be inserted okay should not be inserted let me just run the code and check if this works okay if this works you you see over here we got array is full we got we have got array is full and we cannot add a number 45 let me just have 5 over here and we will get this that function array is full cannot add number 5 okay and all the elements are right now over here we have 34 167 and we have a series of 45s that were added over here so yes our insert function is working well let me just remove all the code from here and now let us let us create a function of inserting at a particular index so void insert insert at index it will accept two things first of all it will accept an integer number and it will accept index so yes we will create a function of inserting at index let me zoom in a bit for you and let me move up a little bit so yes now first of all we need to check if index's value is greater than count okay then index will be out of bounds right we cannot uh, we cannot have an index that is outside of our size so index if the index's value is greater than count then we will simply write index out of bounds okay it has come out of its limits and thus we will return our function okay now let us further move okay first of all we need to check if the array is not full so count should always be less than size over there so when count is less than size we will run a for loop for int i equal to count minus one count minus one i greater than index okay i greater than or equal to index and we will write i minus minus okay so yes this is our for loop and now we want to move our element at ith index to sorry at ith index to i plus 1 th index so over here array i plus 1 will be equal to arr i okay we need to do one simple thing in this for loop and now when all the elements are shifted we have got our place for uh, inserting element at the particular index so array index equals num okay and we'll increase the value of count count plus plus 
and at last we will return okay now what if if this condition doesn't satisfy if that condition doesn't satisfy then array is full okay and thus we will write array is full array is full cannot add cannot add number generally we throw exceptions but to keep the things simple we will just print it in our console so cannot add number and over here we'll have num okay let me have int l okay so yes this is what we are going to do okay if count is less than size we are moving our our elements one step forward so this is our function let us save it and let me run the functions okay so in my array insert at index first of all i need to give a number let us say 100 and then let me just insert it at index 2 now let me save the code and run my code okay so over here i have again got an error we need to we need to say what is size actually it is not size it is capacity so let me run the code again and check it out you see the element is inserted exactly at second index so yes we can we can experiment it more over here let me just write index at index 2 at index 5 okay and over here 1 2 3 four five six seven and eight let me just write index nine over here and let us see what will happen i will just have ten thousand over here okay so let me just run the code over here first of all you see we have got index out of bounds okay and then we have got our number okay we have got our numbers now let me just insert it at index number seven okay so it will be over here 34 will be inserted at one one two three four five six seven eight seven eight let me just have this index at two okay and then we will have ninth number ninth number let me just have this and this will be the tenth element at index let us say at index zero and over here let me insert let me try inserting zero at index three let me just run the code okay you see first of all we get array is full cannot add number zero and then okay for all other numbers we have successfully run the insert operation okay so it is insert at, uh, inserted at zero okay this particular number is inserted at zeroth position okay then we have we have inserted 34 okay 34 is over here okay we are shifting all the numbers a bit and you see all the numbers are inserted at th their specified positions so yes this was about performing insert operations in our class in our our own array class so in this particular lecture we learned about what are op classes then we learned about what are objects then we created a separate class separate array class for ourselves and we declared two methods insert and insert at last actually we had we have declared four methods but two of them are very important for us in the next session we will also create methods for deleting an element so yes that's it for this particular session let's meet in the next session with delete operations in arrays so yes till then keep learning and keep growing thank you everyone